Jeff? Yes, I am. Thank you, sir. Now, this was my first Harley back in 2001. Oh, really? Thank you. The Again, this one has the little itty bitty. Okay, this is different, different than the rest of the bikes. I like it though. Twenty twenty to uh, Heritage Softail Classic. I don't know if they still call it the Classic Heritage Softail. I like the bars, how they're little up like this. I don't remember them being that way in the past. I like the feet positions. A lot of, getting a lot of vibration in the handlebars. I don't know if that's normal. What's nice about the Heritage and I assume it's the same, is that you can take this windshield off in seconds. They just clip and take it off, no tools. I assume it's the same. So my story is my, my first Harley Davidson was a Heritage Softail in 2001. So if you can remember, it's a different feel. Back in the early 2000s, the V-Rod was coming out. Obviously, I think it was last year they stopped making them, or was it last year, something like that. And my wife was actually excited about it. She was coming home and she said uh, her and her friends were talking about getting their motorcycle license because the V-Rod was making so much of a splash back then. It was you know, different for Harley-Davidson, their bike that they collaborated with Porsche to make the engine. So anyways, we head down to the dealership. Oh, I, I should finish my thought there is that I had been looking at Harley Davidson. I had the Harley Davidson catalogs and I've been daydreaming about motorcycles. And the funny thing is, is back then I was looking at the full dresser, the bike that I ride today. It's like, ah, oh, those are for old people. And um, was not interested in that stuff at all. And I fell in love with the Heritage Softail. It's like I love the classic look of the Harley motorcycle from the... Anyways, we're down there at um, Hal's. Hal's Harley Davidson, which it turned into Irontown and as of last year is no longer in business. Anyways, we went down to Hal's. We're looking around and there was a Heritage there. We we're looking at the V-Rods, of course. Looking at the V-Rods. And then they had all sorts of bike there. And I was looking at the Heritage. And my wife looks at the sticker and says, hey, let's, let's talk about this. And then sure enough, we ended up buying the bike that day. So that was back in 2001. It was an impulse buy. It was an impulse buy in the sense that we had no intention of going down there to buy a Her uh, Harley Davidson for me to ride. We wanted to go down and look at the V-Rods. Of course, my wife didn't have a motorcycle endorsement at the time. I had no interest in V-Rods other than I thought they looked cool and they were certainly different, but they weren't the style that I was into at the time. So we bought that and strangely enough, months later, the September 11th stuff happened, which changed the world, of course. So that's my Heritage Softail classic story. And I had that bike for 11 years. I loved it. I rode it as you're probably your, your typical rider. A few hundred miles a summer, ride it to work when you can, when you feel like it, you know, it's a nice day. Um, 11 years, I think I put 18,000 miles on it, which is a not a lot. I did not ride that bike like I do ride my motorcycles now, or my motorcycle now. The, uh, what I found at that time, or what, the, what it was for me, is that it was a soft tail. So it had a suspension underneath, like a 
had its spring in um, shock down there. But it was not that comfortable of a ride. And as I was getting older and I have back problems, it was beginning to hurt my back. So unless I was willing to put up with some back pain, I really wasn't riding it that all that much. And then uh, of course I got old and uh, moved into the into the big bikes and has been a great ever since. But yeah, these heritage uh, has a has a special place in my heart. So when I saw that Harley Davidson redid this, redid the platform for the heritage was I think it was last year. I do like the handlebars up here. I was not, you know, I'm not an ape hanger guy. This is um, this is actually comfortable. I might have to explore this idea. It has a digital tack. I wonder, I didn't look at the other ones. It's kind of interesting. What's really nice about the Heritage, or at least what I really liked about the Heritage Classic, is I could take the windshield off. And I didn't do it very often, but there were times where, um, for example, my, my uh, Kawasaki did not have a windshield, and then later on in life I put a windshield on. And that's when I got that puppy up to 130. It like stuck to the ground. I don't really care for the look of windshields. I prefer not having a windshield if you do looks and stuff. But anyways, what I would do is every now and then when my wife and I would just ride around town with the Heritage, we would uh, take this off and it literally takes seconds. I don't know how this one works, but it was a little spring clip. You spring clip it and it pops off and you put it in this little bag and you're, you're off on your way. I always worried that it would get stolen, but unless you have a heritage, you probably don't even know that it comes off. Anyways, the look of the heritage, at least mine, it just looked totally, it looked like a, like a fat boy. It just looked totally badass. Now it has been, see I bought my my full uh, large bike in 2012, so I had 2001 to 2012 I had the Heritage, and it's 2019, so it's been a long time since I rode it, and the differences I can feel is that this feels smaller. For some reason it, it feels thinner, does that make sense? My Heritage felt beefier, larger, wider. And you gotta remember that it was a pre-2009 model. So the frame was different. So this one I'm sure gets in and out of turns and falls in turns much easier. I bet you that's just a far better performing motorcycle. Obviously the engine is <laughs> way better than what, uh, I had a twin cam 88, which I will say, this was the Twin Cam 88, or I had the Twin Cam 88B, which meant balanced. And I love that balanced motor. I loved it. It didn't have all that vibration. I know a lot of you probably like vibration. And it's, um, anyways. So I feel vibration in the handlebars. That's what made me think about that. So that's either good or bad. I'm not, you know, if you're into that kind of thing, it's good. I do like the, I'm starting to come around to these handlebars. Feels a lot more comfortable. I hope they haven't done it. I didn't notice it on the, on the large bike, on the limited, but I, these buttons are all tiny and small, or they, at least they appear to be to me. And I keep clicking on the ends. I love the comfort position, or the, the riding position. 
I do notice that they took the heel toe shifter off. I'm not sure why. I prefer that. Very nice. Wonder this might be my last ride for the day. I enjoyed that. If you want a comfortable cruising bike, I have to say this is the one to get. I know Maxwell. If you, I'm sure you watch his visit videos. He uh, he got one of these. And I couldn't understand why. Very very nice. I liked it. Took back, took me back. Yeah, brought memories the back. First one. It feels thinner. Well, you got a. What year was yours? Two thousand one. Yeah, new frame and. Yeah, different frame. Yeah. Yep, new frame, new motor. This is a lot faster than the previous, okay, than my old yeah. one. I mean, you were riding a pig back in the day. It was a twin cam eighty eight B. Yeah. And this but is yeah. a Milwaukee eight. 114. 114, and I guess it's still considered a B because it is balanced. Is it? Yeah. Okay. The uh, I can feel vibration in the handlebars, but that might be the desired effect. But it was a fun ride. Very fun. Well, thank you. I think I'm actually. Anything else you want to I'm take thinking on? about the road glide.